Now that we've seen the operation of this shotgun, uh, let's look at uh, the guts of this thing. Um, now, we're going to start with this end over here. Uh, I'm just going to lock the bolt to the rear. That's going to uh, allow my barrel to unlock. If you've had an 870, this is pretty much exactly the same thing. I'm going to take our magazine cap off. That just unscrews. That's really easy. This wood piece comes right off. This is a little bit different than the 870. It doesn't, doesn't uh, come off quite the same way. Uh, and then our barrel can just kind of scooch off there. There it goes. You'll notice a couple of things. One, um, this piece on the barrel is actually doing something. That's actually uh, kind of where we get our gases all locked in and the, all the action happens. And that's where these, uh, these pieces are going to move on the tube here as well as this piece here. So if I were to let this thing come forward, you'll see how... This, this shotgun is from, in uh, I don't even know, it's from 60, 1963 to 1968, somewhere in there. And you can see that through use, all the bluing is gone on here, and that's because these pieces are constantly moving back and forth. Um, a weak point on this shotgun, let's just get it nice and sharp in there, is, uh, let me just sort of lock that back one more time here. And get some other components out here. Uh, it's got this little like rubber O-ring kind of thing at the front. Let me just boop, 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 pull it over there. And uh, it can get worn and cracked, and then your semi-auto won't be semi-auto anymore. So that's one risk, is uh, is this rubber O-ring kind of thing on here. I mean, with a, with a lot of semi-autos, you're looking at um, steel on t steel, self-cleaning actions, where we have this rubber O-ring on here. And this is incidentally what uh, Remington doesn't have with their next, like, the, kind of the next uh, next generation of the 1100 is the uh, Versamax, and the Versamax doesn't use a, a rubber roll ring. Instead, it uses two smaller gas pistons to uh, to control the gas. We've also got these um, these uh, gas component pieces uh, on the top here, and again, these are working with that uh, that other piece from the barrel. So I've got the um, I've got the, the light like cranked on this thing, so you can see see those two little holes in there. Uh, that's where the gas is ported out of the barrel and into this uh, into this tube here. So um, this is this particular barrel and this particular shotgun are built for two and three quarter inch uh, shells. I also have a magnum here, and the uh, the magnum three inch shells only has one of those holes, so it doesn't need as much gas because it's getting more gas from the shell itself, so it doesn't need to bleed off as much. Uh, gas from the barrel. So you notice that the barrel was really easy to take off, um, and that there's a there's an advantage to that. I mean, uh, the the nice thing is that you can get other barrels for the shotgun. You can get shorter barrels. Um, they did run these in a tactical series for a while, uh, so you could get a shorter barrel. Uh, you can get a longer barrel. You can get barrels that are uh, rifled for uh, for uh, sabot or sabo slugs. And those ones will be better for uh, better for deer hunting and that kind of thing. Here in, in this part of Canada where I'm at, um, everyone just uses rifles. There's no sense in using a shotgun uh, because we don't have any um, we don't really have any legislation that prevents us from using rifles. And we commonly have like I I make longer shots. The longest shot I've made so far has been 650 yards. So um, taking a shotgun out for deer hunting isn't, isn't really my cup of tea uh, around this area. But some people do it and, the, you know, some people uh, have those shorter shots they can make, so all, all the more power to them. I'm going to tear this thing down some more. Uh, let's ease that bolt forward. Um, this part's interesting. You can just actually grab this. It might be a little bit stiff, but if you grab it with your two fingers there and just kind of squeeze it and pull up, uh, it'll just come right out of there. Now that our bolt's out, uh, there's actually a uh, just a lever right on uh, uh, on this side that you can push as you pull it in. Same thing as on an 870, and we're pulling out that bolt and that carrier. This is as far as you should be should need to take it. There are these two pins here, so you can um, pop these pins out and pull the trigger group. You may find, like in these older shotguns, these trigger groups are hard to get out. Um, they're really, really in there, so... Um, for this one, I did clean it. I don't think it's ever been cleaned. It's got like 40 some odd years of abuse and uh, and use that's been put into it. So I definitely did not need that cleaning. But for most everyone else out there, you get all your cleaning off the front here. Sorry, I should have pulled off this rubber O-ring nicely rather than just jamming it forward with all that stuff. Um, 
Once you got this guy off, I'm just going to chuck this guy off to the side. And here's where you can um, pull your bolt off. It, it, it's just sitting on this shell carrier here. Let me pull you in a little bit closer. Uh, it's just kind of sitting on there, right? And we've got a, a, a locking lug here that kind of flips up and down. So again, you can clean this stuff off really easily. There's a pin here if you want to pull the firing pin out and cleaning all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to bother because even this one, this, this shotgun that's been used 40 odd years, um, the frying pan's fine on it. It doesn't need to be cleaned and I'm not going to clean it. If you do get in there, don't put, uh, don't put any oil in, into the firing pin channel. You don't, you don't want that freezing up in winter or anything like that. <clears throat> as far as the rest of this, um, yeah, I mean, you can clean off any carbon buildup that you see, but, uh, um, I didn't really have all that much on this one, so I'm not going to clean it. Now to pull this uh, this tube out, um, you know, maybe this maybe this is just me being dense, but I didn't know that that this was just an end cap in here. Let's get that nicely focused in. There we go. Um, this is just a plug that's sitting in there. There's nothing holding this in. It's just friction. So to pull it out, um, we're just going to slowly lever on it and just slowly take it out of the tube. And then as it starts getting closer, sorry, this is kind of awkward because I'm trying to show you, but it's also, come on, kind of hard to get in, in there. There we go. And uh, let's, come on, come on. I'm just going to try to, there it goes flying off across my, my room there. But um, that's it, you know, um, that's all that that cap's doing is just kind of holding this spring captive. Now you can, um, pull this spring out as well as your follower and you can see I've never cleaned it because there just came a whole bunch of junk with it uh, but there's our follower that uh, I should probably clean off yuck <laughs> well now I'm gonna have to put this stuff in the wash but um, installation is a reverse there's our follower that we're gonna throw down and get in there into the tube and then there's the spring get in there uh, this next part's hard. I'm gonna show me struggling because it's probably funny to watch me fight with this thing. Okay, let's. There we go. Hopefully, I've got the cap handy. There it is. Yeah. It is under pressure. Come on. Come on. Okay, let's grab that cap. And just place it over the top and if you just turn it a little bit and pinch it it'll just fit right in there and then you can push it down like you, you definitely wouldn't want to have this thing full of shells if you were disassembling it a because that's stupid and because B because um, that extra pressure on this thing that cat might not hold and it might just fly all over the place so uh, there it's back in so now that my caps back in I can start putting things back together I'm gonna to put this rail on here there's my bolts i'm gonna breach face forward kind of a thing man what like this this thing doesn't get any more simple this is this is a real simple shotgun to put together uh, i'm gonna get it kind of close to the rear here and then what i'm gonna do is just kind of reach in there and uh, push that same lever that's kind of holding things back there it goes come on come on then i press it again What's holding this up here? There we go. So I just push that lever in there. That's going to get us back here. And let's put in our little knobby guy here. And in there. Okay. <clears throat> These rings steel rings and then our o-ring sorry I should show you guys what's going on here I saw one guy recommending that you put like tape over these threads so that they don't cut this o-ring I mean you these o-rings aren't expensive right you can get a pile of them from Brownells for uh, a couple of bucks so it's it's not these things aren't unobtainable they're they're out there 
And I think you can use, I want to say like a number 21 Viton ring, but uh, check out my review. Uh, I do have that stated in there, and I've got some more high def pictures of this thing. Uh, let's put the rest of this thing together. So we're going to lock it back. Move some little steel pieces there. We're going to put our barrel in. Let's. I'm just making sure I'm not going to hit anything in my vicinity here. I'm just feeding that up. Fitting it over the front as well as the rear there. And I'm not being too hard on it. <clears throat> that guy right there. And the cap on as well. I'm not gonna ratchet like really, really hard there. And I'm just gonna function test it as well. So Pull it back and forth, check, make sure I don't have any ammo. Where's one of my snap caps? Pop my snap cap in, maybe this won't work, I don't know. There we go, that worked. Okay, and I'm just gonna pull the trigger. Again, this is a snap cap I put in there, it's not a live round. Sorry, wasn't all the way forward. Get out of there, snap cap, you suck. I should get, um, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, dummy rounds that you can make with, uh, brass rims that I might, I might have to make some of those for this thing.